Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and thank you for joining me for the 21st episode in my series on the most important women in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today's segment is on Umm Habiba Ramla bint Abu Sufyan. May Allah be pleased with her. Her and the Prophet were married in the first year of Al Hijra, but she did not actually come to live with the Prophet peace be upon him in Medina until 6 years later when the Rasul was 60 years old and she was 35. Um Habiba was the daughter of Abu Sufyan, one of the most resolute enemies of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who was raising one army after another in order to annihilate the Muslims. Um Habiba radiallahu anha, or Ramla, was initially married to Ubaidullah bin Jash, the brother of Zainab bin Jash, the Prophet's seven wife. They were amongst the first people to embrace Islam in Mecca and they were amongst those early Muslims who immigrated to Abyssinia in order to be safe. Under the migration, Ubaidullah converted to Christianity. She remained a steadfast Muslim resulting in their separation and divorce as a Muslim woman should only be married to a Muslim man. She could no longer live with her husband and once they had been divorced, she could not return to her father who was still busy fighting against the Muslims. So she remained with her daughter in Abyssinia, leaving a very simple life in isolation, waiting patiently to see what Allah would decree for her. One day, as Um Habiba sat in her solitary room, a stranger in a strange land, far from her home, a maidservant knocked on her door and said that she had been sent with a message for her. The message was that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had asked for her hand in marriage. And that if she accepted this proposal, that she would be named one of the Muslims in Abyssinia as her wakil, so that the marriage ceremony could take place in Abyssinia, even though she was not in the same place as the Rasul. Naturally, Um Habiba was overjoyed and accepted the offer immediately. Allah has given you good news. Allah has given you good news, she cried, and gave the girl a little jewelry she had. The Prophet ﷺ knew her father was a huge enemy of Islam and had hoped that this union would stop the pain and suffering of the Muslims. Soon after all of this, the Muslims who had sought refuge in Abyssinia were summoned to the place of the Negus to witness the simple marriage ceremony in which he acted on the Prophet's behalf and her wakil Khalid would act on her behalf. When the marriage was finalized, the Negus addressed the gathering with these words, I praise Allah, the holy, and I declare that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger and that he gave the good news to Isa alayhi salam. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, requested me to conclude the marriage contract between him and Ub Habiba, the daughter of Abu Sufyan. I agreed to do what he requested and on his behalf, and I give her a dowry of 400 gold dinars. He handed over the amount to Khalid, who passed it on to Ramla. Although she could not travel to Arabia straight away, she was provided for by the Prophet, peace be upon him, from the very moment that they were married. The Muslims who had witnessed the marriage contract were just about to leave when the Negus said to them, sit down for it is the practice of the prophets to serve food at marriages. And joyfully, obviously, everyone sat down again to eat and celebrate the happy occasion, as all of us would. Um Habiba especially could hardly believe her good fortune. She sent a gift of gold to the servant girl who had first brought her the good news. Um Habiba recounts that shortly afterwards, the servant girl came to me and returned the gold. She also produced a case which contained the necklace I had given to her and she gave it to me saying, the Negus has instructed me not to take anything from you and he has commanded the woman in this household to present you with gifts of perfume. The girl only had one request. I have accepted Islam, she replied, and now I follow the deen of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Please convey my greetings of peace to him and let him know that I believe in Allah and his prophet. Please don't forget. And so, six years later, when the Muslims in Abyssinia were finally able to return to Arabia, 
Um Habiba came to Medina and there the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warmly welcomed her. Um Habiba relates, when I met the Prophet, peace be upon him, I told him all about the arrangements that had been made for the marriage and about my relationship with that girl. I told him that she had become a Muslim and conveyed her greetings of peace to him. He was filled with joy at the news and he said, Wa alaikum aslam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And on her be the peace and the mercy of Allah and his blessings. The strength of Um Habiba's character can be measured by what happened shortly before the conquest of Mecca. When her father, Abu Sufyan, came to Medina after the Quraysh had broken the Treaty of Hudaybiyah in order to try and renegotiate a fresh settlement with the Rasul and the Muslims. He first went to Um Habiba's room and was about to sit down on the blanket on which the Prophet, peace be upon him, slept when Um Habiba, who had not seen her father for over six years, asked him not to sit on it and quickly folded it up and put it away. Am I too good for the bed? Or is it the bed too good for me, he asked. How can the enemy of Islam sit on the bed of the Holy Prophet, she replied. And it wasn't until the conquest of Mecca, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, generously pardoned him, that Abu Sufyan finally embraced Islam and began to fight with the Muslims instead of against them. It was this time that Um Habiba accepted and loved him again as her father. When she received the news that her father and brother Muawiyah, who later became the Caliph of the Muslims, had become Muslims after the conquest, she fell down in prostration to pray to Allah out of thankfulness and gratitude. Um Habiba spent four years of her life with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and lived for another 33 years after he had died, dying at the age of 72. May Allah be pleased with her. Like all of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Um Habiba radiallahu anha spent much of her time remembering Allah and worshiping him. She has related that once the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to her, a house will be built in the garden for anyone who in the space of a day and a night Praise 12 voluntary rakat. And she added, I have never stopped doing this since it was from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So I'll leave you with that today, brothers and sisters. Remember the importance of ties with our family, but remember that Allah always comes first. And Allah will take care and provide for us and our families once all is said and done and everything is done right. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.